Hey, today I'm riding better. This is a Tennessee walking horse and the client asked me how do you keep him in gait? Like, so once you get them to gait, how do you keep them going? And I think it's a great question. I know it's in some of my videos, but I don't always put it in the description. So, and each horse is a little bit different. That's the hard part. So keeping each horse in gait can be a little bit different. So once you get them to gait, then to keep them to gait, you're constantly adjusting them. If they're not holding it, uh, you're adjusting them by using your half halts to control how fast you know they're going so they don't go too fast. And then you're also using your leg to keep them in the um, same speed and the same rhythm. So once you push them to go, at least the way I train the horses, if you don't keep a light leg on them, my horses will slow down and they'll start uh, becoming slower and slower because I teach them push to go and pretty much stop riding for them to stop in case anybody's ever falling off. So if their leg comes off, hopefully the horse will slow down. So with mine, when I want them to go faster and to gait, I squeeze with either both legs or I alternate my legs depending on the horse. And I use pressure and then I add more and more pressure until I get the speed I want. If you give too much pressure too fast, then they'll usually go too fast and they'll go past their gait. So it's kind of like you're stepping on the gas pedal and you push on the gas pedal until you get it up to speed. And everybody thinks that's really easy now, but it wasn't when you were learning how to drive. It was very hard and everybody's cars were jerking and stuff. And then, you know, you'd go too fast and you wouldn't slow down for the stop sign. You slam on the brakes and you scared the hell out of your parents. So now we think it's easy, but it wasn't back then. So with the horse, we're putting pressure on to get them to go. Then I keep a light pressure with my leg. I just have it touching their side to keep them going that speed. If they trip like he just did, then I stop it back up to make sure he's paying attention. Then what I'm doing is I'm pushing with my leg. You have to have a feel of their gait. In other words, you need to know what it feels like because if you don't, you won't know if you're pushing them past it. So I feel what they're doing underneath me. And if I feel they're getting too fast, then I half halt on the reins. Some of the horses I can just half halt and I don't have to push with my leg much because they're a goey or forward horse. Other horses like this horse better, I have to push a little with my leg at the same time because otherwise he'll slow down too much. So the hard part is getting them into that gate, that sweet spot, right? Where it's very smooth and then keeping that speed. The other thing that happens is the terrain. The terrain changes what they do. So I'll be going down a little slope in a second and that'll make the horses get a little pacey and it'll usually make them speed up. So you got to keep them out of the pace and you got to slow them down. So you're constantly changing things. So that's why when you see lots of people selling horses and stuff, they're in a flat area because they're trying to show you the gate. So they're in an arena or they're on a road where it's more consistent. And if you practice in areas like that, where it's you know completely flat or a slight incline or a decline, it's easier for you to hold have that horse hold the gate for longer periods of time because you're not dealing with the terrain changing. So I tell people find a road, find a dirt road or a trail that's consistent. You know, it's not constantly up, down, up, down, up, down because that's hard to keep your horse's gait when you're just learning in the beginning. So you want to get it consistent so you can get a feel. Now what's a feel? So a feel is what you feel in your buttocks and your body as the horse is gating. What are they doing underneath you? Okay. And that takes time because if you've never ridden a gated horse and you have no instructor, you really don't know what that feel is. So you need someone to kind of help you to get it. And then over time, you get better and better at that feel. So that's why so many gated trainers can get on and we can feel it. And we can feel if that horse is going out of gate, we can feel if they're pacing, we can feel if they're getting trotty because we've learned to get that feel. Now again, each horse is different. So I've had people tell their friends, oh, I can ride gated horses and they get on the person's horse and they start making it pace. And then they tell them, oh, your horse can't gate. And I'm laughing because what that means is that they just had the feel of that one horse they rode 
kind of probably gated well and easy and now they're on a different horse so they're pushing it you know too fast or maybe they roar, rode a horse with uh, pads or um, heavy shoes so they're going much faster than the horse that they're on so be careful if somebody tells you that because a lot of times it's it's not true but some of the times it is okay so you got to get the feel now first you got to get the feel if you've never done this before get the feel of how the horse walks so i'm just walking right and what you're trying to do is feel how his body is moving underneath you what is happening with your seat so if they're just walking your seat should be moving forward and back so you should feel that movement back and forth then you'll feel your legs moving against the horse's belly and the horse's belly kind of goes side to side so you'll feel that belly swinging in between your legs so when i talk about using one leg or the other to try to get them to extend their walk you just let your legs go with the motion of their belly so when his belly goes over to the left i'd push with my right leg and when his belly goes over to the right i'd push with my left leg so you got to have the feel of the walk first Okay, so you know your movement, and then you're trying to, can you feel his feet underneath you moving? Can you feel his feet hitting the ground four different times? Because that's what happens at the walk, just like when you walk, your feet hit the ground two different times, because we only have two legs, okay? But you can feel it. So that's what you're trying to get first, before you even try to start speeding up, is get the feel of what their walk is, okay? Now I'll try to do this on different horses, because it'll help different people. So with the walking horse, again, if you do this correctly, you get the feel of the walk. And then when we go to their first gait, which is their flat walk, which is actually like a regular horse's extended walk, it's still just a walk. It's just a faster walk and with a bigger stride. So here we go. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna squeeze a little bit with both legs. I keep this horse's head down because otherwise he tends to get pacey. So I'm gonna speed him up a little bit and I'm speeding them up with my legs. Now I started alternating my legs, but it's just a light touch. And then my energy is telling him to go, which, you know, doesn't always happen with the clients, but I have a forward energy like, hey, let's go somewhere. I also have spurs on so I can touch him very lightly with my spurs just to get a little bit more speed. And I also have a stick. So sometimes I'll use my stick because I'm trying to get more extension because sometimes with the spurs, some of them will shorten up a little bit. So I speed him up enough that I feel like it's a forward walk, that his head is going up and down, my seat is going back and forth, and on the video, you'll probably see my hands moving. I'm not moving them, they're just moving with his body, okay? So I'm not pumping my arms. My arms, I'm trying to keep still, but they just go with this motion, okay? So right now, I haven't given any half halts, but I have contact on his mouth. It's the light contact. Now I'm adding a little left leg because he got a little crooked. You're also trying to keep them straight besides having that feel of what their gait is. Now he slowed down and he went to the right, so I pushed a little bit with my right spur. Now you can also push with your seat some if you want. You can push back and forth, okay? So most all the gaited horses have a flat walk, so this will be similar for most of them. So it'll feel a little different because he has overstride. Okay, so I'm pushing a little bit with my seat because I like to ride with my seat some, but my legs have a light contact against his side. Okay, now we're getting up here, they're doing construction, so we're gonna turn around. So if I'm trying to practice their gait, I'll try to make a wide turn, because I'm trying to keep that same speed. If you go stop, go stop, it's very hard, okay? Now with this horse, he knows me, and we know each other pretty well, so if I keep a light pressure with my hands, I don't know if you can see this, my fingers around the rein. Some people open their fingers too much and they ride like this. That's not enough. I want you to keep your fingers around the reins. You'll see my reins are short. My hands are about six inches in front of this horn. And I'm just keeping a light contact. It's like my hands around the steering wheel of the car, okay? You're just holding it. So now we're going downhill. So now I know this horse might get a little pacey. So I'm gonna speed up, but not as fast as I was going up the hill, okay? Now as the head comes up, I squeeze my fingers together to put pressure on the reins to bring his head down. Now I'm pushing with one leg, then the other. So here it goes, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. Now he's not going very fast, but I'm just kind of letting my legs go against him and let him know that I still want him to keep walking because I used to make him go downhill really slow so he would do that with her, but now she's a better rider so now he can go a little faster. Now as we 
I'm still pushing with my right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. My hands, my fingers are not moving. I'm not half halting because he's keeping himself collected so I don't have to do any half halting. All I'm doing is just kind of keeping my leg on the gas, which is his side. So like you keeping your foot on the pedal of the car, you're gonna hold it there. So you don't have cruise control, you gotta keep your foot on it, okay? So now this goes straight and then it goes flat, um, then it goes downhill. So I'm gonna go a little faster for his flat walk. And he went over to the right and I didn't ask him. So I'm gonna push with my right leg, a little leg yield to get him back in the middle. Okay. Now I just have light leg pressure against his side and I am, I'm trying to concentrate so I can tell you everything. It's hard to do that at talks, but I'm pushing a little bit with my butt cheeks. And that means you can kind of push your seat back and forth, like towards the horn and then the cantle, or you can kind of squeeze your butt cheeks and that'll usually make the horse go a little forward. Now right here, it has a dip. So I'm gonna give a half halt right here. I'm gonna squeeze and now relax. Because if I don't hold long enough there, they get a little pacey. Now it starts going uphill. So I'm pushing a little bit with my seat. Some of you don't know how to ride with your seat, but all you're doing is pushing. Just like you're on a swing set, right? And you push, you pump your legs, you push your seat. So I'm pushing with my seat. This is good speed. Now I just keep it here. So I try to sit still and I try to feel. Is he slowing down? Oh, he's slowing down a little bit. So I'm gonna push with my seat again. And I feel what he's doing. He's perfect. So I'm just gonna sit here. I still have contact on my reins, but no half halting. And I'm still pushing a little with my legs. Now it's going downhill. So I'm gonna sit back a little bit. And I just relaxed and this horse just slows down. See, that's why I teach him to do that when I stop riding. So I pretty much just stop riding. Yeah, I'm gonna good. push him again, cause now it's flat. So this is the hard part, the flatter or the more consistent your area is, the easier it'll be for you to practice your uh, gait. But if it goes up and downhill constantly, your arena is uneven with bumps, it's gonna be difficult. Okay. So this is our flat walk. One, two, three, four. That's his feet hitting the ground. One, two, three, four. He sped up, so a half fall, and he tripped. So I slowed him down. Now I'm going to push him just a little bit forward. It's always just a little bit. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's the speed of his flat walk, okay? Now in each terrain and everywhere you go, it can be a little bit different. It could be a little faster or it could be slower, but here that's what it is. On the trail, it's faster because we have more room to move out, okay? So now I squeeze and relax on my left rein to get him to make this turn because I don't like to hold on him. Now he slowed down because we're going downhill a little bit and he's very sure-footed. So I'm not gonna push him and make him go faster because there's construction and other things going on. And it's good that he's paying attention to his feet, okay? Now, once we get back on this flat trail where I can see the footing, I'm going to push him just a little bit more. So when you're flat walking and your horse is on the pacey side, anytime it goes downhill, even just a little, in the round pen you're riding in the arena or something like this, you got to slow it down a little bit. If your horse is on the trotty side, then you could actually probably even go faster than you go up the hill because it'll help them. So the pacey ones can, should go downhill slower Trotty ones can go downhill faster. The PC ones should go uphill faster because that will help their gait and the trotty ones should go uphill slower, okay? All right, so one leg then the other. Right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. So I'm doing that to get him to extend and reach out more with his legs instead of using both my legs. Right leg, left leg, leg, left leg. And that works because when I push with my leg and his belly's going the opposite way, his hind leg is up in the air. So when I push, he reaches more. So that's why we push at with that timing. And that's with any horse, even regular horses, if you're trying to get an extended walk. Okay, so a little half halt, one. Now I'm just sitting here. My legs are still touching his side. It's not like my legs are completely off because some people ride like that. So if I take my legs completely off, look what happened. My legs aren't touching him at all. He stops. Good job, that is. Boy. But that's how I ride them. It's not how everybody it, you know, trains them. So each horse can be a little bit different, but that's what I teach him. So when I go, and he's not tripping, I like to push them a little bit, but you'll have lots of forward horses out there and it's best to go back in the arena and retrain them so you can slow them down a little bit and uh, get them. So when you push, they go, you know, when you pull on them, they slow down. So one little half halt here, 
because the footing change is right there. There's a little dip and if I don't half halt, they start going out a gate just in that one little spot. So that'll happen in your arena too. So now I'm kind of pushing with my seat. Right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg, right leg, left leg. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So uh, what I'm counting, that's his four feet hitting the ground. His head's going up and down. I'm kind of pushing just a little bit with my seat. Just a little. You shouldn't look like you're humping your horse or something. Just push a little back and forth, okay? And with him doing this, my hands have been consistent. I occasionally give a half halt. Now, he's been in training for a while, so he's good now. But in the beginning, I had to half halt and hold this horse all the time. I really had to help him. And if we weren't out here on the trail, I actually ride him with a little bit more loop in the rain. But the, again, there's construction. I gotta be safe, so I gotta pay attention. So he just got a little fast. I don't know if you saw his head swinging a little bit more. I'll do it again. So say he gets a little bit fast on his own. He starts going faster. And I'm like, no, I didn't ask for that. And then he got pacey. So I half halt, bring him back down. And I push him again, okay? Now with these pacey horses, if they get pacey and you taught your horse how to leg yield, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm gonna half halt. I'm gonna push him off my right leg and that'll help him to separate his legs so he's getting faster. Now anytime he gets faster, I usually half halt and I push them sideways, okay? Now we're gonna turn around again. Now to do his running, so that's how I consistently keep them the same speed. So I'm using my legs and hands. It's just, you know, people don't always get it, but I go, you do the same thing in your car, you do the same thing with your bike. You're pushing on the gas pedal in the car and you're steering with the wheel. And then occasionally you, you tap on those brakes. You're like, oh, ho, ho. You tap on the brakes, get it back down to speed and then you speed back up. So you're doing the same thing. You're using the brake and the gas. Okay. So on your bicycle, you do the same thing, right? You're pedaling to make it go faster. Then you use your brakes to slow down, right? And you gotta speed up in certain areas and pump harder because going uphill it's harder so you got to use more energy and going downhill there's not as much energy so the same with your horse going when you're going up hills you got to push him more with that leg you got to squeeze a little bit more or use a little more stick or spurs to keep them going the same speed but going downhill if they don't naturally collect themselves and back off then you're going to use your half halts more going downhill to keep that same speed so now when we go to the running walk, we're going to do the same thing, but things change, especially as the train changes. So again, this horse is pacey, or on the pacey side, I should say. And I did teach him to trot in the round pen, so it's getting better. And now sometimes he's almost starting to fox trot. Okay, so now I'm going to push him faster. So it's just a little faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, remember, running walk's not super fast. People think it is. No, the rack is fast, but the running walk is not super fast. So you're trying to go as fast as your horse can walk, but keeping it from pacing. So now I'm starting to go downhill. So I'm going to bring my energy down. What am I doing? I'm doing take a deep breath. Relax my legs a little bit. Horse slows down. That way I'm not pacing here. So if you're riding with other people, you're like, hey, can you slow down for a second? Will you wait up for me? Because if you just keep speeding up trying to catch up to them, you're just going to pace. So you got to slow down and you got to get your uh, people you're riding with to slow down. So now I'm going to push him forward. So one leg, then the other. Now he bunches up sometime. He does it right. He did it right then. So I relaxed on the rein and I pushed with the leg and I sat there just a couple seconds to get him to just unbunch himself. Because he can bunch himself up. And then you got to itch. But he does he gets his head tucked way in and then he paces with his head down okay and again that's usually somebody did something with him along the line so this is a good running walk for him but on trail it's much faster so one leg then the other one leg then the other so now i'm going downhill so i'm just going to relax my energy okay and when i say relax my energy i'm kind of slumping my body and i'm not pushing with my legs now that i want to go i'm going to sit up tall I'm going to push a little with my seat. I'm going to push with one leg, then the other. One leg, then the other. One leg, then the other. My hands are consistent, so if he starts getting fast, I'm going to half halt, but I have not yet. So here's his running walk. You'll see his ears flopping once in a while. And 
sometimes as he squares up more so he gets more trotty than pacey he'll get just a little soft bounce of it it's not a pure fox trot but it's going towards it it's going right there a little bit but then now he just went to pacing so i take a little feel of his mouth and push him off my right leg now i got him back to gating okay so again when you're going for your running walk just go a little faster than your flat walk was try not to go super fast and ease into it. I see a big mistake is people go from a standstill and they try to go from their to their running walk, but they don't know what they're doing yet. They really don't have a feel of your horse. So always take them to through your flat walk first, get that extended walk, that's your flat walk, and then speed up. Okay, so now we're going downhill. So remember when I said he's pacey, so he can only speed up so much. So I'm trying to do a running walk, but I'm not because I'm going downhill. So now I'm pushing him off my left leg because the leg yielding, which a lot of people don't know how to do and don't think it's important, is super helpful. If your horse knows how to move sideways off your leg, then when they get pacey, a lot of them, you just push over sideways a step or two and they're back in gait. You don't have to stop. Okay, so I want his head in this position. Now I gotta feel what he's doing. So my seat's going back and forth with his, his head's going up and down. Right here, he got a little pacey, so half halt, and I'm pushing him off my leg. And now he's back out of it. So I don't know if you saw him bring his head up and he got a little stiff. That's what he does. He stiffens his back and he inverts his back. Okay. They will do that when they're nervous too. I get questions saying, like, my horse gets pacey when he's nervous. What should I do? And I was like, you got to work on the nervous part. It's not the gate part. You got to get him over whatever issue he's having, riding in groups, etc. And then his gate will get better. Okay, one leg, then the other. Left, right. Right, this is going to be a long video. Okay, now we're good, but again, we're coming up on that dip. So as I come up on this dip, I'm going to give a half halt, and hopefully he'll stay in gait. So I gave a half halt, and I pushed with my leg. Now one leg, then the other. Okay, as we get up by that red barn over there, it goes uphill, so it makes it much easier, because again, I can go faster with the PC ones uphill, because the hill helps them to engage their back end and so it's easier to ride so i always track practice with the pacey ones trying to get some speed up the hill and build up their back end and their muscles their correct muscles instead of their swinging muscles for the pace so i'm still pushing with a little bit with my seat not much because he knows me so once they get to know you they're like i know what to do and you don't have to do it so much anymore but in the beginning you got to Okay, so now he's got a little bounce in his step, so he's almost going towards a foxtrot, but not yet. And then see, he foxtrots and then he paces. So now I'm half halting, push him over. Now he's good again. So I'm keeping just a steady contact, like I was holding a pencil in my hand, nice and easy. And I'm pushing with my legs, but I'm also trying to concentrate on keeping your horse straight. A lot of them are all crooked, and if you just straighten them out, they'll start gating. Oh, all that arena work comes into play, which no one wants to do. Now he's pacing, so half halt, sit back, push him off my right leg. He got his head down. Now he's back in gait. See, didn't take much to get him back into gait, but you got to develop that feel. If I don't know what that pace feels like, well, then I would have just kept going, and then he would have started. Oh, well, he right now he's very smooth. Okay, so now let's turn the other way. So now remember, and everybody goes, we watch your videos and you get the uphill and downhill. I go, yeah, because it doesn't look it until you get here. And then you're like, oh. So it makes a big difference, inclines and declines with these horses. And it'll just be slight, but it can totally change your horse's gait. And that's why sometimes you'll get to certain parts of the trail and they gait phenomenal. And you get to other parts of the trail and they are horrible because it's the terrain and you're not adjusting them for it. Sometimes you get to different terrain and you're like, you can't gate here because it's just going to pace. So you might as well just walk. Okay. So one leg, then the other. Push in. So I keep the pacey ones. It just depends on the horse though. Because uh, again, some were ridden with their heads way down. But him, I usually keep his head kind of level with my horn or just below it. And the rest is feel. So as I'm feeling him move, you're trying to feel is their back relaxed because I'm going for a gate where I need his back a little round and relaxed because he's on the PC side. Okay. 
okay if i was going for a rack which is a little bit of the opposite that's more their back stiffens up a little bit um, they kind of elevate and you usually bring their head up so they know you know what i it gives them a difference and like oh my head's down i do a running walk my head's up she wants me to rack okay so his head's coming up a little bit now it just went down so i didn't have to do anything but if it didn't go down i would have put some pressure on my reins and we taught him first one of the first things we do pressure on the reins means put your head down okay and you got to teach him in the right order and then they'll get it okay so now right leg left leg right leg left leg right leg left leg now we're coming to the spot where they get a little pacey so i'm just going to relax my legs look he's he's like do you want me to stop now i added just a little touch with my leg after that because he acted like he was going to slow down too much okay now we're past that spot so now i can speed up so then you tell your friends okay we're good to go let's go make them slow down in those spots so that your horse is not gating well so right leg left leg right leg left leg and I just got my fingers around the reins. I do have contact. Now his head came up. I just applied pressure to get it back down. Otherwise, he would have either started pacing or if I was lucky, he would have racked. But... Okay, so now I can feel him really kind of swinging and picking his legs up underneath me. Because he's getting a little bit more on the trotty side, so he's picking his feet up higher. And I can feel that, but you have to, you have to try to feel it. You can't. I tell people, go in an arena. Start walking, close your eyes, make sure there's no nothing in your way. And you know, open your eyes once in a while so you don't crash. But that way it blocks everything else out and you just feel. You can do it now, just close your eyes and feel. And then open them every couple of seconds so you don't crash. But then you feel, oh, that's what it's, I can just feel it, I can't see anything. So you'll be able to feel more if they're getting trotty or pacey. So. So when he gets on the trotty side, I, I feel like a little suspension in his step, which means I feel like a little bounce, like I'm going over a jump or something. But when he gets pacey, his back gets very tight and he shortens his step up. Okay, so your horse might do that or he might pace differently. They're all a little different and that's the hardest part. But with this guy, when he's pacey, he shortens his step. He usually breaks his head up occasionally. He shortens his step and then he tucks his head in, but he's still pacing. Okay. Okay, so there I slowed it down. And uh, now he's kind of sucking back. So now I'm pushing him. Now I tap him twice with my stick. He's like, You're talking a lot, and I'm getting tired. So now I'm on a better part of the trail, so I can start pushing him again, one leg, then the other. But I'm still going downhill right now. This way always goes downhill, so I don't go as fast. One leg then the other. And I'm just going with his movement. And when I say it push with my seat, it's kind of like you're sitting on your chair and you move your right hip and left hip. Or you can move both hips together. But you're kind of just digging your butt bone down, create some pressure up in the saddle. They want to move away from it. So. I do it very lightly and not all the time. It just depends on the horse. The dressage people know how to ride with their seats, but some of the other disciplines do not. Or, if, you know, if you just learn to ride, you might not know what I'm talking about. So you got to look that stuff up. You don't know what I'm talking about? Look it up. Google it. If you one of my videos, it might be someone else's. But then you figure it out. It's like looking it up in a dictionary what the word means. Oh, well, I get it now. Okay. So right now I'm pushing with my seat. I had this funny little spot coming up where they get pacey. So I'm going to just feel. Let's see if he holds it through here now. He's like, I got you, Gay. He doesn't have to do anything. So I didn't do anything. I just sat here and keep his same speed. And again, with him right now, I'm not half halting much at all. Just occasionally when you hear me say he's going out of gate. So let's try and go a little faster. never go for the, oops he got a little pacey so I'm gonna push him off my left leg okay. with, with the walking horse I don't go for the rack until I really make sure they have the running walk down and their owner has the running walk down because otherwise everybody wants to rack and then they get pacey so right there it went downhill he brought his head up just a little shortened his step and he paced but I could feel it 
now I feel he's reaching out again. He's getting a little bit more towards the trotty side. Now right here he got pacey, so it's probably the footing pushed him off my left leg. Now if I feel like their feet are still kind of pacey and I stop and back up, and you'll hear me do that a lot with the new horses, because I'm trying to get them out of that footfall. Right? I did that a lot with chocolate chip. So even as you're going, you can leg yield them. I can push them off my right leg. So I'm going for speed and I can push them off my left leg. Because that way it helps to separate their legs more as you're going for speed. Right here it goes downhill a little bit. I feel I'm getting pacey. I'm slowing down. Now I slowed way down. Now I can speed back up again. Okay, but if you don't have that feel, that sensation of what the gait is, you won't know and the horse doesn't know what you want to do. They're like... I don't know, lady. I just want my carrots. What do I got to do to get those carrots? Okay. They don't know. So even if the horse is trained perfectly and you get on and keep riding it wrong, they say, well, I knew what my job was a couple years ago. I was supposed to do this gait. And now this lady says I can put my head up and just swing my legs and be lazy. So I guess I'll do that now because that's when she gives me carrots. So even if they gated well, if you don't have a feel, you don't know how to get it, you never felt it. You didn't ride with the owner or the owner didn't know what to do. You didn't have a gated trainer. You might not know. You got to develop your own feel. Um, and that's the hard part. When I started this, you know, I did dressage and hunter jumpers. So I had a feel of their gates, just not the gated horses. So it takes a while to get the feel of what it is. And finding that spot when you're out on the trail and you're like, oh my God, it's so much fun. And then it's gone. It's because the horse got it there or the terrain, you know, where you did the right thing at the right moment and then you don't know what you did. So you have to practice and you might have to go to that spot on the trail and just practice over and over in that one spot, getting that gate and really get the sensation of it and then try to figure out what you're doing at the same time the horse is doing it and then try to imitate that somewhere else. So now I'm just letting him walk and relax so we're not gating anymore. I'm just finishing talking to you. So. But in the beginning, you don't know, and sometimes your friends really don't know. I have a lot of people that come, and then once they take their lessons, they go, oh, my God, I've been pacing the whole time, or oh, my God, I've just been racking the whole entire time. My horse doesn't even know how to do a running walk. Okay? Now, again, it depends on the horse, but with the Tennessee walking horses, you know, if they have the longer stride, then you should be able to get a flat walk and a running walk. Okay? If they have a short stride, well, and they have no overstride, like they don't reach over with their back feet because not all walking horses do, even though some were bred to do it, some didn't get that gene. So those ones are going to have more of a racking gait or their running walk, they're going to have like a little head shake. It's not going to be much, okay? So you got to watch how your horse walks. Does it have the overstride or it doesn't have the overstride? So that's why the Rockies don't usually do a running walk because they don't have an overstride unless it's the random one that got bred with it. Um, they're going to do a racking gait, which is their rocky gait, or people call it a saddle gait. It's called many different things, but it's the same thing. It's four beats, no overstride. Okay? Now, the ones that have the horses on the trotty side, say you have a walking horse, but he's on the trotty side. You should have a flat walk. You should have a running walk. But if you go too fast at the running walk, that horse might trot. Now you will, if that horse is on the trotty side, you'll get an extra gate in between in time if you keep riding him right, and that'll be a fox trot. So if you're an endurance person, right, and you don't want to trot this trick, if you get one of those on the trotty side, we'll go in um, flat, you could do a flat walk and a running walk. Okay? Going downhill, since your horse doesn't get pacey, you could fox trot down all the hills, and that would make your horse faster. But nobody asked me any of those questions. But I think it, because if you got the pacey ones, you got to slow down down the hill or you got to pace down the hill. And I wouldn't want to pace down the hill. And then again, if you need to catch up speed, but say you go, I got one on the trotty side, but he's not super fast up the hill. Well, you keep working on it, okay? When you first go out and ride them, you work on it and you make them do that flat walk and the running walk up the hill. And then when they get tired later in the ride, you let them canter. Just let them canter up the hill. It'll make diff, you know, different muscles. But if you let them canter right from the get-go, then they're going to canter up every hill because it's much easier for them. All right. I hope that helps some of you. And if our video doesn't run out, I'll try to do some with the Rocky Mountain Horse so you see the difference.